Welcome to DFRSoft's instructional video on field data analysis. I'm Dr. Alec Feinberg, founder of DFRSoft and author of the book Designed for Reliability. So when you get open up DFRSoft, you'll get to our welcome page and you'll see all our tools. We're going to click on the reliability tools, so we hyperlink over to our pull-down menu style page, a hyperlink page. It's just like you're, you see in your normal pull downs and have any applications, the only difference is we have it already open for you. And each module is numbered in the reliability area. So the real returns is module six, reliability plottings are at module two and three, system reliability is four. Uh, you get your environmental profiling and nine, accelerated reliability growth. You have lots of tools in TFR Soft. Uh, quality tools, a lot of sampling, SBC, uh, availability and sparing, uh, engineering tools like uh, thermal analysis, shock and vibration, electrical analysis, corrosion. So you have an awful lot of tools in DFR Soft for only $285 currently, the current price. So we're going to um, go to Module 6 and we can uh, uh, tab over or we can hyperlink over. So I'm hyperlinking. And when you uh, get to the module, you'll uh, see that there are two areas that you want to look at. The first area right here is uh, for average, if you want to know the average number of units that are, uh, if you have just, you don't have really good data set and you have just averages, the average number of data that ship per year, and roughly observed number of failures, um, and the number of uh, days in the field that they uh, survived for failure. So you're going to use this module, so uh, very helpful. The second method is the traditional method, method two, and this is the one that most people, that you'll probably be using. Um, and this is the way that it, field data is done. Uh, you enter the number, uh, and when you get to DFR soft, all the numbers go in the green squares. Uh, so we're, we enter first the number of device hours, uh, rather the number of operating hours in the year, and that's 8760. Uh, if you have, for example, uh, f a operating hours of uh, 4,000 hours per year, uh, you might want to use that. The next area you're going to tell DFRSoft, uh, you enter one, two, or three. One, if the items are repaired and are replaced. Two, if they're permanently removed. Uh, three, if you want to use column three right here to tell DFRSoft exactly how many were repaired in that month. Uh, you may not, some might just be permanently removed and some may be repaired. So you can actually tell DFRSoft by month. So you have that option. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to um, tell DFRSoft the first ship month. And here we have October 1st, 2009. And then DFRSoft will populate the months below. Uh, from there on out. You have the ability to do 220 uh, months of data. And uh, so you start, and um, you can you start by uh, entering wherever, whatever, uh, once you enter uh, data, everything populates. So uh, the number of units sold, you put into this column right here. Uh, the, and uh, the FSR soft uh, has a little help there area there if you're, and also the number of units that failed, you put in this column right here. Uh, now the offset, um, you would put in this column here. The offset is, for example, if you ship a unit and it takes three months for it to be installed, uh, you want to tell DFR soft that offset. and. Um, we uh, in DFR Soft uh, have zeros for the first three months, and the reason for that is, even though um, if I put the three here, I'll get some negative device hours, and that's okay. DFR Soft can handle that uh, for the cumulative device hours, and it would be more appropriate uh, for that. But because we're going to do a Weibull analysis, I don't want to carry over any negative numbers uh, into the time area. So uh, th that will translate over. Um, so we have our data set. We've entered it into DFR Soft, and uh, so now we're ready to look at our results. And just to the right here, you have the cumulative number of devices that survived, uh, the, the cumulative device hours, the device hours with offset, and the cumulative uh, devices that failed. Now to the right of that 
is our basic statistical results, and below that is our graph. And you can see the MTBF uh, improving uh, over the 30-month period as we accumulate device hours. Unless you get a dramatic number of failures, that should improve. So also, uh, way down below, you have other plots that you can look at. Um, cumulative simple cum plots, uh, monthly PPM, instantaneous failure rate uh, by month, and that sort of thing. So going back up, let's look at our, res our statistical results. We have our graphical results. Now we can look at our statistical results. Um, here's our instantaneous failure rate, uh, and here is our MTVF information right here. Now, this is the average uh, MTVF with offset, which is what we want. That's 66,000 hours. Here it is without offset. That's 83,000 hours. Obviously, um, the if you don't have an offset, you accumulate more device hours, so it's a little bit better, as you can see that. Um, so we have a um, 66,000 hour MTVF. Uh, we Put our, we can enter a confidence bound around that if we want. I'll put in 80%, for example, right here, and uh, changes. Uh, so around the 66,000, the 80% confidence lower bound is 52,300, and the upper bound is 75,000. So that's our basic results. And to the right of that is our uh, are some calculators if you want. Uh, you can, if you want, uh, for example, the MTBF is 66,000 here. I've entered that, and the VX number. Say you want to know where the 5%, and it says 5% uh, of the units would fail around 3,385 uh, uh, hours in the field. So that's basically our results. Uh, the next thing you might want to do is Weibull plotting, and that depends upon whether you think it's appropriate or not. Now, Weibull plotting uh, doesn't do very well when you when you have mixed failure modes. So, um, because when we do a Weibull plot or a log normal plot or something like that, we always want to have one. We want to really want to look at just one failure mode, because if we have mixed failure modes, the beta won't be accurate. It'll be for mixed failure modes, so it won't be very accurate. And we have a video that you may want to look at that discusses uh, mixed failure modes. And I, I, I'll show you where that video is in a minute. And um, so it's, all, it's also all basically on our website. So you can go and look at that video. Now, um, if you think it's appropriate and uh, you want, you have some lower population, for example, that you think are infant mortality, and you want to separate that out, uh, uh, and you clearly know that there was a mechanical issue, so you can do that in DFR Soft. So, if that's appropriate, you uh, this button here. First of all, we want to tell DFR Soft what we want to do plot from and to. So we're going to say from one to the 30 months we want all the data. So you don't have to put in the last month; it just uses that for the default. So now I'm going to press the data sort, and it sorts the data. Uh, and DFR Soft uh, knows where the failures are. For example, here at two and a half months, we had one failure, or rather uh, one suspension uh, that was repaired and replaced. Three and a half months, we had four failures. Uh, so DFR Soft will tell you that when units are repaired and replaced, it knows uh, how long they lasted or for the suspensions and things like that. Do you also notice a number down here? First, let me show you there's a summary uh, results uh, here. It says the number of units failed was 33. The number uh, of suspended was 127. The average, what's called the average suspension month, is 11. Uh, and I'll explain that in a minute. The total number of failed and suspended was 160. The number of shift was 295. So you have a good summary here. Now, um, as I mentioned, there is an average month for suspensions. Now, what is that about? Well, DFR Soft, let me, there's a comment right here that explains that. Uh, so if items are repaired, then DFR Soft will use the repair month of the number of good uh, prior to the repair. However, all non-repaired units that are good are then classified as suspensions. DFR Soft does not know the actual month <coughs> Of, this, of each suspension in the field uh, that was not repaired. Alternately, D DFR Soft averages the non-repaired suspensions and an average month for them. 
Uh, the user ha obviously has the option to be more accurate, so you can change the data and you can add suspensions and take away this 99 number if you have more accurate information on them, and you probably can get that. And you're certainly welcome to ch change this data set uh, before you enter it into the Weibull area. So now we have our data and we're ready to enter it into the Weibull area. So we, uh, we copy the data into the buffer. We press Control C. And we go over to SREL plots. This is module three. And that's where we are. I've already pasted it in. One hint uh, to let you know, you can just go right here and you can paste it. The first thing you want to do is you want to turn off the calculator and then turn it on, and that will help you uh, do the calculation uh, in DFR. It'll help the DFR soft do the calculation in a better manner. So once DFR soft has done the calculation, you're all set to go. Now the results are to the right here. Here's the median plotting position uh, and the regression fits for the Weibull log normal exponential, a normal and three parameter Weibull. There's also the maximum likelihood estimation and all the plots are to the right. So let's go look at some of the plots and we'll look at, we'll, we'll zoom in on basically on the Weibull regression because that's what people are most familiar with. So let me zoom out a little bit. So uh, we can see here uh, that it's not a really good fit, and uh, the data above it, in fact, um, you can look at the results on your Weibull regression. You can see it's only a, the row for that fit is about 84%, not very high. So um, you can see not a great fit, and we, we indeed might have a lower population here that we want to separate out. This may be the mechanical failures that we suspected are early population failures. So we're going to, we see that that inflection point right here is, we're going to separate out that lower population. We're going to just choose a number between the, this, this point and this point around 18%. So we'll separate that out right there. So we go to the mixed mode area, and that's right here, if you, uh, where we were before. The mixed failure modes is in this area right here, and you have to tell DFRsoft where that inflection point is, because if you don't, uh, you looked at our mixed failure mode video, it's right here. I'll show you that uh, when we get to the end of this um, video. You click on it, and it'll bring you over to our video page and then you click on that video and you'll learn about mixed, how to do mixed failure modes, which you're sort of learning about right now. It's just in more detail uh, in that. Also, you have your pop-up help if, you have, if you're stuck. So DFRsoft uh, just arbitrarily uh, divide, uh, will uh, divide up your data, uh, but weighted by the number of um, suspensions and things of that nature that it finds uh, so, um, and uh, failures. So we're going to put in the 18% and uh, tell it where the inflection point is. So then your divider is divided up accordingly. And here's your two populations, your lower and your upper. Now we can go look at the graph and the results. We hyperlink down to that. It's over and to the right, down a bit. And there's our plot results for our Weibull. And you can see it. Here is the lower population separated out and the upper. This was our original distribution right here, uh, fitted with the regression analysis that, that was not a very good fit. And here's the fit for the lower population and the fit for the upper population, which is much better. You can see that. Now the results for each uh, of that fit, um, let me zoom in on that. So indeed, the lower population has a beta of 0.8. It's infant mortality. Characteristic life is about six months. The upper population has a beta of 5.1, uh, uh, wear out beta, and the characteristic life is about uh, 20 months. So there you have it. And you can further separate out more modes if you see them in the upper population if you think it's justified. So I do recommend looking at our video, and uh, you just uh, would uh, click on that. Uh, there's lots of videos in DFR Soft, and they should you just click on it and it uh, takes you to our our website <clears throat> and it shows you the mixed mode failure mode video here you can click on that and the video will come up thank you for listening to uh, our field return analysis um, video in DFRsoft